All right, George Cambosis beats Teofimo Lopez in a 12-round split decision. Huge upset. This is what I'm going to say about those who pick Cambosis. If you pick Cambosis, I sure do hope you bet on it because if you did, you would have a pretty penny this morning. You know what I'm saying? Your pockets will be laced because that upset all the big money. Nobody's seen that coming. Cambosis fucked up the whole bag for a whole lot of people because that's something that was completely not supposed to happen. And for the most part, Teofimo Lopez tried to stick to his word and get him out there in the fourth round. Uh, Cambosis ate about four or five straight rights. What people didn't anticipate and what I didn't anticipate is the fact that Cambosis got a set of whiskers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That Australian kid got a set of whiskers on him. And Teofimo Lopez went out there like an idiot. Um, right after he couldn't get him out in the first two rounds, he should have abandoned that and got back to boxing and got back to being Teofimo Lopez. It was just one problem. It looks like the year off um, took a toll on him. And not only that, he didn't look like Teo. You know who Teo was fighting like? Loki. He was trying to fight like Canelo. He wasn't on his toes. He wasn't on his feet. He was flat-footed, inching forward. I mean, you could see it. You know, and to pay for it. He wasn't catching shots. He wasn't doing none of that shit. His defense wasn't there. To tell you the truth, Teofimo Lopez looked like a shot fighter. But I can hear the people right now. Give Cambosis his credit. This isn't it. That is giving Cambosis his credit. He capitalized on all his mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Teofimo Lopez doomed was done to what he wasn't doing inside the ring. Cambosis just capitalized on it. You know what I'm saying? Cambosis wasn't bringing the fight to Teofimo Lopez. So he was just defending and, and attacking and slipping and parrying and countering everything that um, Teofimo Lopez was doing. Because to me, it's not hard to outbox Cambosis. It's hard to outbox Cambosis when you're just looking to knock him out with one shot and you don't want to abandon it. You know what I'm saying? He was determined to knock Cambosis out dramatically, you know? And the stakes was up there for him to do it. But right after he seen he couldn't do it, he could have just, he should have just went back to boxing. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if he could because he didn't look nothing like himself even when he was supposed to box. Or maybe he was so emotional that, you know, he couldn't get his head straight on, on the shit, you know? Because a lot of shit that he was doing, it just didn't look like him at the end of the day. But nonetheless, he lost. And right after that loss, he made a bad situation worse by going up and saying he won after that. You know what I'm saying? However the situation was bad before, right after he lost, he poured ether on it and set it on fire right after he came up and said, man, I won that fight. You didn't win shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? And them is facts. You did not win shit. And the fact that you came up and said that make it look worse. But it's probably for the better because you moving up after this. I don't know if he has a rematch clause, but... If you ask me, he should leave that shit alone because you weren't going to do nothing but drop the belts anyway. At least this way it could stay together. We could possibly see an undisputed champion if Cambosis, you know what I'm saying, is interested in that kind of thing. You know, I think Teofimo Lopez should just let that shit go. Uh, regroup, uh, refine your center, do Tai Chi, meditate because something's going on with you. You could tell in a damn buildup, like your interviews was kind of weird and your energy was off. You seen, I don't know, something like it. It was just something real strange about the way he was acting. But nonetheless, Cambosis out outlasted you. I uh, countered the shit out you. He had a lot of good shots. Um, a lot of shots that I didn't see him getting hit with. But nonetheless, he wasn't thinking. So that's just the way it is. All right. Uh, to my nine-year-old elementary boxing fans, he said that um, you said people who pick uh, Cambosis really don't know shit about boxing. What do you think about now? I still stand by that. Because not all of you, most of you guys who pick Cam Bosa, it wasn't based off anything educated and grounded in boxing. That's just your wishing for somebody to win or hoping you're, you're, you're gambling. So just because you pick in the air and it happened and it happens to be correct, it don't mean that you didn't know shit. Because all the uh, because anybody that knows boxers, all uh, all the boxers, the commentators, everybody building up to fight. Nobody gave this kid a chance just based off. What Teofimo Lopez is known to do and the style that uh, Cambosis had. That style was beatable for Teofimo Lopez. Just Teofimo Lopez looked like hot shit at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So you guys want me to give you some credit for that. I'm not giving you credit for shit. Sorry at the end of the day. I'll, I'll just be wrong on this one. You know what I'm saying? Period. Uh, the other thing. The bias. 
because I picked somebody to win. Why are you guys so sensitive about who you think I like or not? You know what I'm saying? I put the kid on Duck Chronicles. What more biased talk do y'all need to talk at the end of the fucking day? That, that's the shit that I want to know. You know what I'm saying? I picked the person that everybody in the world knew and who was supposed to win based off boxing and based off his opponent. Period. He was supposed to ice that cat. And for the most part, he did do it. It's just the kid got a chin on him. You know what I'm saying? He should have went to plan B and C after that. He didn't do it. He wanted to be hard-headed and stick his head further down the hole. And that's what the fuck he got. And he deserved that at the end of the day. And, and maybe he needed because the kid needs some soul searching or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. So where do we go from here? Um, uh, I don't know. But I think Teofimo Lopez should leave it alone. If you want to go to 140, just go ahead and go 140. You want to go do that, but drop the belt anyway. So maybe it's the best thing for you. You know, uh, Cambosis is interested to see what, what he wants to do next. I know he's going to want to parlay them belts for a while because I think, what, he's Australian's first or something, which is cool, you know. But uh, I, will, I would like to see what goes on next. Oh, the other part is uh, the real highlight of the fight is uh, Ogava versus what's that South African guy name? Man, to me, that was a, a I mean, don't get me wrong, the Teofimo Lopez Cambosis Bose fight, that, the, uh, that was cool, but that fight, man, that fight was hella interesting and, and, and a little bit dangerous because I thought South Africa guy was going to get murked hard. That Japanese guy, Ogava, I can't wait to see what he do next because he looked like a certified problem, certified problem. But nonetheless, uh, it was a pretty decent card just based off uh, truly uh, those two fights alone. A uh, four did good too. So you know what? Um... It was a good card for the zone. As far as Teofimo Lopez go, I don't know. Put him on the rising gloves. See, see what he do next. You know what I'm saying? Can you bounce back? Do you got a rematch clause? Do you even want a rematch? You want to go to 140? And if you do want to go to 140, you can't go to 140 looking like that, bro. Because that version of Teofimo Lopez, Devin Haney would have whooped your natural ass. That version of Teofimo Lopez, Josh Taylor would have whooped your natural ass. You know, so he got to regroup, get it together. Even if he, that, that's if he can get it together. I don't know what's going on in his personal life. Maybe he needs some more coaching. Maybe he need to get outside somebody besides his father. I know his father was trying to do in the corner. He was talking to him calm, trying to bring him down. Hopefully he get back to boxing. But his dad should have kept it real with him. Like, dude, you behind. He on the verge of winning. Blase split. But then again, if he did that, he probably went right back to head hunting. And he just set himself up from jump. Uh, right after he couldn't get him out there in the first round, and right after he seen him eat all these rights, he has to be like, okay, all right, I got to break this guy down, then knock him out. Because some straight shot just ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? It was a foolish move at the end of the day. Um, uh, it was just real dumb, you know, and he paid for it at the end of the day. So, uh, shouts out to Cam Bosis being the first Australia, I can't say undisputed. And, and that's another thing. Even... Teofimo Lopez talks shit about Showtime and this and not announcing him undisputed. I watched the whole DAZN thing and everything DAZN did on the whole fight. DAZN, none of the announcers never once called Teofimo Lopez undisputed. You know, so if you're going to be mad at Showtime, I think you probably need to be mad at DAZN too. Because I watched and I waited and I was listening. Not one time did they call Teofimo Lopez undisputed. So hopefully, maybe now... We can see something like that if Cambosis is up to it. But that's all I got for now. A pretty good night of boxing. I'll catch y'all a few hours later. I'm out.